Well, as you can see, we are getting really, really close. Holy mackerel. 30 more subscribers and we will be at the milestone of 10,000. I never, ever, 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 lover, lover, never, 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 never imagined that we would hit 10,000 way back when, when I started to develop this channel on YouTube. And it just is mind blowing. It's mind blowing. Yeah, totally. Well, we've got a, a busy premiere and uh, obviously I just wanted to kind of open up with that to give you an idea of just how doggone close we are. 30 more folks, come on! Click subscribe, click subscribe if you're watching this. Click, 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 click. So, at any rate, over on this workbench is a little bit of organized chaos. This obviously is the 332, 300, that I am preparing for my good friend Heidi over in Switzerland. That's right. This young lady who lives near the Swiss Alps and hikes them often, out of any guy, out of any dude that does restoration work in the world, she picked me. Yeah. Put your hands up. 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 Ooh. No, that is pretty cool. I remember when she first reached out by email and she goes, yeah, I'm Heidi from Switzerland. And I was like, yeah, right. Okay. Who is, who's, who's trying to punk me here? What's going on? What's going on? But it was real, man. I mean, that is, wow. And I've had the chance to ship machines all around the world, but never to Switzerland. Switzerland is just like, that's just a little bit of special heaven right there. You know what I mean? So at any rate, I'm going to keep plugging on this machine. Hope to premiere it real soon and then get it heading towards the great country of Switzerland. Yeah. All right. Over to the other workbench. Oh. Guten Tag, Herr Obermeister. Wie geht es Ihnen? Ganz gut? Ja, ja, ich auch. Ich auch. So, at any rate, Herr Obermeister, if any of you are really new to the channel, Herr Obermeister is our friend from Germany. And what I just said to him, if you have no idea at all what I just said, I said, basically, good day to you. How are you? And he said, pretty good. And I said, me too. I also, I also, e auch. So, at any rate, it's great to have Herr Obermeister here. And because he happens to be sitting on top of the package, which, you know what? Normally, we can't kind of see through the package. Yeah, we can this time. We could definitely see through it this time. And uh, there's a little bit of damage to it already. I'll get some lights on. We'll take a closer look at it and then begin the unboxing process but as soon as you see Herr Obermeister from Germany you know right away that this machine is somehow tied to that great country so uh, that that's your first major clue in seeing Herr Obermeister here in the unboxing on top of the box saying hey look at me look at me look at me look at me so there's clue number one it's going to be a German machine no doubt about it and if you're also new to the channel, let me introduce some other folks as well. So that if you're going, okay, what's with the little characters? What is this? Some sort of Sesame Street thing? What is it? Yeah, not quite. But we do have fun here in the playroom. It's a workshop and a playroom. If you're brand new to this channel, if you're not new to the channel, I'm speaking your language. You already know what I'm talking about. So little bit more music and then we will jump into this unboxing so along with Herr Obermeister we have Reggie White former Green Bay Packer Mr. Bean does he need an introduction I don't think so I don't think so he does not need an introduction, not even close. Right in the back, we have Dr. Singer, 
trying to make sure that Dr. Singer is balanced. And then our newest, one of our newest additions, I should say, is uh, Umi. Umi from uh, Japan. And she's not really our newest. I got to kind of stand corrected there. Umi is from Japan. I'm trying to get her balance too. And the very newest friend at the workshop, and any, any of you that follow faithfully already know. And let me move him towards the front so you all can see him. Is the singer repair guy. And I've had a couple of suggestions on names for him. And of course, we have the pirate and also the captain. Now, the significance of this host of friends, so I adjust my camera angle a little bit because Umi is so tall. So all of these friends, they got, they got a message that I was all by myself in the workshop. I was by myself. And they felt sad. They were like, hey, we're by ourselves too. Why don't we all come together and be like a family? So they did. And one of the first ones to join me was none other than Dr. Singer. Yeah, Dr. Singer. And you know what? I am remiss because Dr. Singer's niece and nephew are in the background. Doggone it. I almost forgot them. They're so quiet. They're so quiet. You don't even hardly recognize that they're there, but they are. I've got to find a place to balance them on, on top of this box. This box is a little bit of tippy toppy. Tippy toppy. All right, we'll kind of put them right there. I'm going to move the single repair man back and put this other cute little cousin of Dr. Singer's there. Yeah, I think that'll work. So these are my friends. And for that matter, they're your friends too. So Dr. Singer was like my first friend on the scene. And I'm not going to get these in exact order, so don't hold me to that, okay? And then we had uh, Herr Obermeister, just behind the captain there. The captain is so tall. Let's switch positions, guys. Kind of like back when we used to do lineups in school. They'd always put the tallest in the back and the shortest in the front. I was usually somewhere in the middle. So again, uh, we've got Herr Obermeister there. We already met him. The captain just behind him. The pirate on the left there. And Reggie White in the back. And then, of course... We need a special camera to shoot Umi because she is so tall. We're still going. 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 All right. I'm not trying to embarrass you, Umi. You are a tall, beautiful lady, and that's, that's totally cool. Especially with Dr. Singer, by the way, because he's really sweet on Umi. Got a little bit jealous when he saw Umi standing next to the King of Sweden. His Majesty the King of Sweden, because he's almost, this, he, they're about the same size. Matter of fact, I got to bring him into the shot too. I almost totally forgot him. Hold on. Isn't it great to have so many friends that you almost, I mean, almost lose track of them? It's, what's that about? What's that about having so many friends you almost lose track of them? All right, we're trying to get the, His Majesty balanced here. We're, we're giving it a shot. I might have to help him balance. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on, Your Majesty. I know this is a little bit embarrassing. Sorry about that. Trying to get you balanced there. Holy gumdrops. That's too tall. All right. Your Majesty, you're going to be kind of leaning just slightly. Not much. Just leaning a little bit. All right, I'm going to get this done quick. Otherwise, we're going to have somebody tip over. So there is Umi. Isn't she beautiful? Isn't she the most beautiful girl you've ever seen, really? She's lovely. She's absolutely lovely. So Umi is a, a, a very new addition as well. His Majesty the King has been around for quite a while. And His Majesty the King is from Sweden, obviously. And he represents all machines that are from Sweden. 
most in most cases the Husqvarna Vikings. And then Umi being from Japan represents uh, primarily the Japanese machines, the uh, the clone machines that were post World War II. But she's also developed a very special friendship with Dr. Singer. And so she sometimes will pop into the scene as well when we have Singer sewing machines. And she might pop in in other places as well. So uh, she's kind of versatile when it comes to where you might see her appear in Facebook shots or otherwise. So again, a review. You might be tested on this. Reggie White, former Green Bay Packer. The captain. Right in the back there. Uh-huh. Herr Obermeister. The Pirate. Who, if you remember, you know, most people think of pirates and they're thinking, man, those guys are mean, they're thoughtless, blah, blah, blah. But the pirate is the one that sourced a consolation prize for Mary Klein back in the day when we did that contest that was based in Sweden and in Norway. Switch those, reverse that. The contest we did that was in Norway and Sweden. And uh, there was not a declared winner, so he found a beautiful Betsy Ross uh, cast iron machine that we ended up giving to Mary Klein as a consolation prize. That was the pirate. The pirate did that. He's that thoughtful. I know, I know. Shh, don't tell anybody. All right. And then who else do we have? Who else do we have? Well, you know Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean right there, and obviously right behind him, uh, Dr. Singer's uh, ne niece and nephew. Uh, the niece is on the left, the nephew's on the right. As far as I know, they might have switched clothes again. You never know. Dr. Singer... And the latest and greatest guy, the Singer Repairman. So this is my extended family right here. Well, you, all of you watching are my extended family as well. But these are my special friends that are kind of keeping me company and sometimes will jump in and try to help a little bit, um, you know, with different projects. So if you're brand new to the channel, meet my family. Meet my extended family. And uh, you never know, you might, might be quizzed on all the names. So stay alert, stay focused, stay focused. Yeah, yeah. All right, more music. More music eventually. Eventually. So that first one I played was called Like That. The next one I played was Smoky Eye. And this next one is called... Okay, this is an interesting, this really gets my wheels turning. Subway dreams. Do people dream on the subway? Is that a thing? If they're commuting like a big distance and they fall asleep, do they dream on the subway? I don't know. Type in the chat if you think people can actually, number one, that they can actually fall asleep on a subway and not be fearful of being mugged or violated in some way, gosh forbid. Uh, and if they do have the confidence and peace of mind to fall asleep, do they actually dream? I wonder what they dream about. Do they dream about work? Do they dream about home? Do they dream about going to the mall if they have a mall? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Type it in the chat if you have any ideas on that, if you don't mind. All right, the next one is Subway Dreams. All right, my friends. Let's get you back to your regular spots. Umi, very good to see you. Dr. Singer, I'll put you right next to uh, your girl. Uh, right next to Umi. All right. Reggie, over here, my friend. Hey, by the way, Reggie, you guys are kicking it right now in football. You're kicking it. You're, I, the, the next game coming up is against, I think it's the Ravens. I think it's the Ravens. All right, yeah, all right, hands up in victory. Hands up in victory. That's right, that's right. Let's let's hope we can go all the way, huh? Mr. Pirate, Captain, these guys are actually friends. Who, who thought that a sea captain and a pirate could be friends? But they are, they're, they're, they're tight. They're tight, they hang out together and everything. Yeah. All right, Dr. Singer's Niece and nephew, let's get you guys back where you usually stand. Gotta keep an eye on things. Singer repair guy, we'll go right over here. Near the fireplace, you're a little bit older, you probably get cold. I know I do sometimes. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bean? Yeah, I know. I know, you're a wonderful dancer. No doubt. And Herr Obermeister, again, you're the big clue that there's some sort of a German machine in here. So I'm gonna move you to the side and we're gonna get this going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kein problem. Kein problem. Ah, schönen Tag. I das das Wasser is nicht so gut. Too cold. This weather is too cold. It's too cold. All right. So let's see what we can come up with now. Let's see what we can come up with. Other than a very short song. That was a very short song. They must have not been dreaming in the subway too long, which is probably better. Because, let's just face it, there are some folks that ride the subway that are looking to take advantage of other folks. So you don't want to sleep too long. Just a quick quick nap. We used to call them ranger naps in the military. So, ranger nap. One eye open. Ready to go. All right, so Cal Calcutta Sunset. Calcutta Sunset is the next one. And the search word I typed in, so listen for these in the background, is the keyword flute. I never played the flute, other than, you know, like the little recorder thing that's kind of like a flute, but not really. Uh, but I love the sound of the flute. And most of these pieces are going to have some sort of a, a flute player in them somewhere. So I'm just curious, if any, any of you ever played the flute when you were in school or otherwise, type it in the chat. If you were a flute player, you all know that I was a trumpet player, so we always kind of looked on and admired the flutes a little bit. A lot of cute girls in the flute section. What's that about? So this is Calcutta Sunset. It runs 2 minutes and 47 seconds, so I better talk less and unbox more. Here we go. fun song. Okay, let's get going on this. I'm just going to show you real quick. I don't know if I can prop it up with Mr. Bean's car or not. I'm going to try. Oh yeah, that's wide open. Let me zoom over on this real quick and just show you kind of what I'm concerned about. So this, this type of container, this type of container is a little bit more brittle than the totes. The totes have a little bit more uh, elasticity, a little bit more pliability. They're a little bit more flexible uh, and less prone to cracking and breaking. This type of container is not the ideal container to ship in uh, because it's a, a lot thinner gauge plastic and it's a rigid plastic so it tends to fracture if it suffers an impact. This is all wide open right here if you can see that in the shot. I've got my finger touching the packing materials on the inside the same thing is true here. Part of the bottom is actually missing. You kind of see it there with some of those peanuts starting to fall out. So uh, a little bit of a concern what we're going to find inside. And I'm remiss in mentioning this particular machine uh, came from the great state of Texas. And uh, this is an existing customer that has sent me this machine. Uh, I previously prepared uh, a 332, a, a FOF 332 uh, for her and uh, she now has sent this machine which again based on Herr Obermeister being there you can pretty much guess that it's going to be a German machine. Will it be a FOF? I don't know. There's, If you're not aware of it there are a number of other German type machines so 
We can't assume that right away. You know what I mean? Can't assume it. So that was Calcutta Sunset. And now we're going to do Far Apart. Kind of like social distancing. Far Apart. Far Apart. All right, here we go. <laughs> No, I didn't hurt your car, Mr. Bean. It's fine. Your, your car is real strong. It's a very strong car. It's holding this uh, package up nicely. I'm going to move it now. Yes, I'll pay for it if I break your car. I will. All right, let's spin it all the way around because I think we have to open up this side now. And I can see because this container is transparent yeah, mostly transparent. It's, it's kind of transparent slash translucent, but uh, I can see that there are peanuts in there, so I'm going to have to get some sort of a container to uh, collect them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to need a container. And these look like my packing peanuts, so I'm guessing that uh, my friend from Texas, her first name is Jane, uh, that she probably recycled the peanuts that I sent her 332 to her with. So which is, which is great. It's great. It's good to recycle and reuse things instead of throwing them away. All right, so I've got a little box that we can add these peanuts to. I think this little just come right off pretty much. to be extra cautious because sometimes folks will wrap things in the bubble wrap and then stick it in around there and uh, oh yeah she definitely uh, repurposed and reused the materials here's my original bubble wrap this is my original bubble wrap that I wrapped the foot controller and power cord in it's actually got my writing on it so good deal Our society is a throwaway society. It's great whenever we can see people trying to reuse materials that otherwise would end up in a landfill. So, yeah, that's good. Okay, this looks like it's probably going to be, this is going to be the foot controller for it. Kind of see that through the plastic bag and power cord, etc. A bit of a cover on the bottom there because otherwise that electrical field is wide open on the foot controller. Good, 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 good. So that was called Far Apart, and now we're going to do Momo Do, Momo Do. I'm not making that up, folks. Momo do. Yes, Umi, that almost has a, a Japanese flair, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, this is fun. So in here, I can see we've got a light bulb and maybe some bobbins. So I'm just going to set that to the side for right now. Jane sent me indirectly, she packed 
some towels in, uh, towels, towels in here as uh, protection. I don't think I mentioned that I was short on towels, but you never know. I say all kinds of interesting things. Oh yeah, you can't see? Okay, hold on a second, terrible master. Just don't fall, just don't fall. Okay, yeah, that's kind of what we're working with right now. Here, we'll come off the tripod. Come over by Harold Obermeister and see what he's looking at right now. See what that is. Hopefully that the door didn't get snapped off, huh? We shouldn't be able to see that. Yeah. Uh oh. All right. Don't don't get nervous, Herbal Meister. It's okay. If something is broken, we will fix it. We will fix it. It's what it's what I do. Yeah. 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 No problem. Yeah. Ich verstehen, ich verstehen, ja, all is klar, all is klar, all right, good. All right, so let's continue the process. We'll see if we can't get that machine out of the box and take a closer look at it to see whether or not with the outside container being as damaged as it is, whether or not the machine survived, was protected by the vintage sewing machine fairies, or whether or not we have a casualty. Fairies don't always work. They don't always work. They sometimes take a day off. And if your machine is being shipped on the day that they're off and someone didn't pack it well, either you or someone else, ugh, it can be a bad day. So that was Momo Do, and now we're going to do This Is Not The End. This Is Not The End. This machine is very spare. Very spare. This machine is very heavy. Oh, what is this? All right. Harold Meister, I might need your help on this one. I got it? All right. If you say I got it, I got it. No worries. Give me that confidence, I'm even holding it with one arm. Okay. Let's check this container, make sure we don't have anything. All right, if anybody's short on, uh, anyone's short on bath towels, this looks like a, maybe a, like a, to wash your face with, um, type in the chat, 
then send me a private note with your address and I'll mail this to you because I got plenty of these. I really do. It's very nice though. Ooh, and it smells fresh too. So, no, I didn't wipe my nose on it. Maybe a little. Ooh, a red one. This is pretty. Very nice. Yeah, just type in the chat. If you're, if you're short on hand towels, well, these aren't hand towels. Uh, like wash towels. These are like wash towels, like you might use in the tub or shower or something like that. I'm willing to share. I'm willing to share. Here's another one. A white one. There's a couple of green ones down here too, but they're kind of taped down. I don't know if I'll be able to get these out. These are like a terry cloth one. We certainly will be after I pull the tape off of them. It may be terry terry cloth. All right, so here's kind of what they look like. You don't want these, I understand, but they're still salvageable. So, so if you're short on uh, washcloths, just type it in the chat. Contact me after. We'll meet by the trunk of my car. And I'll get you. See, that one survived pretty good, sort of. All right, how about this one? Yeah, yeah, that wasn't as bad as I thought. I thought it, it might actually rip pretty bad. So there you go. This could be your set for your guest bath bathroom. Yeah, for your guest, guest bathroom. There you go. Kind of a brown, a red one, a white one, and then two greenish ones. All right, I'm going to set them to the side. No one, no one claims them, then I might share them with Hank. You never know. Maybe this will... Yeah, I probably would need all of these to dry them off with, but at any rate, we'll find some use for them. All right, what do we got here? Just bubble wrap, more bubble wrap. A styrofoam padding here for the bottom. All right. So that last tune again was called This Is Not The End. And now the next one is This Is Not Jazz. This Is Not Jazz. Yeah, to give me an idea of how much this container suffered in the journey, can you see that? That hole's not supposed to be there. I can put my whole hand through it pretty much. Yeah, I can have fun doing anything. I don't know about you. Yeah, it's busted out through here as well. See that? ripped all the way through so we'll see we'll see how this machine survived hopefully hopefully she's okay If you're new to this channel and you're either getting a package or you're opening a package, always point the blades of the scissors away from the machine inside so you don't slip with it. okay to reuse materials but you want to anchor them down I, sh I should not been able to remove all of this so easily that means it's not really tacked down to the machine very well right 
So we will see. We will see what we'll see. So any guesses at this point? Any guesses? Type in the chat if you think you might know what model this is and what make it is. Color is kind of a big clue on this one, isn't it? This color is classically a Foff color, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, son of a gun, there's another... Uh, we got even a bigger set of uh, wash washcloths than I thought. We've got more in the back of the machine, too. This is pretty cool. We're going to take care of that uh, guest bathroom yet. You never know. All right, if you haven't typed it in the chat yet, I'm getting ready to move off some of this core wrapping that's left on here, so we're probably going to see pretty quick, pretty quick what machine we're working with. excited to find out what model and make this is, but I'm also excited to check out these washcloths on the back of here. See if it see if they're a direct match for the other ones. Yeah, they pretty much are. Look at that. Well my thanks to Jane because can you ever have enough washcloths? I don't think so. So hope she doesn't want these back. I don't think she does. So I wonder if this color is unique to Jane or whether or not Texans like this color. What do you think? Because again, this machine is from Texas. So maybe Texans like this color green. I can only imagine. Okay. For my pile of other. Oh, I, I stuck them over here. Yeah, the only problem with putting tape on these is it tends to pull the threads, you know, even, even if you remove it semi carefully. But they're still usable. So I think we're I think this is our last one now, but look at this. That could totally take care of a, of a guest bathroom, don't you think? You got the greens, you got the reds, you got the brown. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Maybe if if you send another machine, could we go with hand towels or bath towels, please? That way we can kind of expand the set a little bit. No no more washcloths. Got plenty. Got plenty, okay? Yeah. All right, so that last one was, I have no idea. This thing uh, scrolled back up, hold on a second. So I think that last one is called This Is Not Jazz, and this next one is called Flutes. Flutes. All right, so remember, get your guesses into the uh, chat if you haven't typed them in yet as to the model that this machine is. What model is it? Now this is uh, inside of the bag with the foot controller. Foot controller isn't wrapped up at all, but these were just kind of stuck in there. And all three are good. That's pretty uncommon. None, none of them are popped. I mean, not oh, well now they are, but okay. Yeah. So here's our foot controller, obviously not an original foot controller for this type of machine. And if it's a good clue for you, 
Look at these plugins that are fairly unique to this model that we probably at this point are pretty sure it's going to be a FOF, right? But here are some of the unique plugins for this type of FOF machine. All right. Here's about this little bag too. This did not happen in the machine being shipped right now, but at some point it did happen when being shipped, not to the workshop, but some other time. Remember I always talk about those pedestal feet? This was in the bag with uh, the bobbins and the light bulb. So it obviously got snapped off. Remember we had that other machine as well that was a 130-6 that I believe also came from Texas. Yeah, it did. The 130-6 that came from Texas and uh, that leg got snapped off too. So this will be a very careful repair. Again, if you kind of look at it right here, you can see the almost like the mic near microscopic bubbles because it's a cast product. So you can't just slap it back on with glue and expect it to stay. It's gonna have to have an a couple of anchor points on it to keep this on securely. So. It'll be a little bit of a little bit of a thing to do. All right, so that one's empty. So along with a broken leg, along with a broken leg was this older style incandescent bulb, which considering my new LED bulb replacements work on a machine like this, should work on a machine like this. Uh, in all likelihood, uh, I will not be using this. So kind of like the uh, the washcloths that I showed you. If anyone needs an incandescent bulb, which you probably don't, but here it is. It's yours. And then these bobbins as well for the machine. And most of the FOF machines from the 1950 period, similar to this one, like the 332s and that, and the 260s and all that, they're all going to take the same kind of bobbin. So it's always good to have more of these for sure. All right, so let me set the broken off leg, the light, and the bobbins over here by the foot controller and the power cords, etc. And I'll pick out a little bit more music and we will finish unveiling this machine that came from the great state of Texas. So that was called Flutes. And now after flutes, we're going to play Whitefish Salad. Whitefish Salad, not making it up. All right, so if you don't have it in the chat yet, it's probably going to be too late. We're getting ready to unveil exactly what model this machine is. And I'm not looking at the chat, so if you already typed in the correct answer, make sure you point that out and uh, you'll get credit in the class today for special participation. So I don't know if uh, Jane packed this or someone else, but again, I would not recommend putting strapping tape right on the finish particularly with an older machine like this, because that, that can actually pull the patina right off, especially when you're talking about a, a more of a matte Mozilla type finish like this. I'm gonna try to remove this very carefully.
might hear the flute on this. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it. Kind of pulling that bubble wrap away from the pillar as I'm trying to work the scissors in there to cut down. It's real snug, which is good. So I'm pleased to say, so far at least, I'm not seeing any new damage to the machine. Uh, these plastic knobs like this are really at risk along with this little uh, piece that sticks out for the light to be turned on. So that's that's good. That's good. It's looking like maybe the vintage sewing machine fairies were on duty when this machine uh, shipped. Getting a lot of movement on the motor on the back. A lot of movement on the motor so that must have come loose uh, in transit. Let's get some more music on and we'll continue unveiling this. So that was called Whitefish Salad. And now we're going to play something called the Scrappy is Scrappy. delicate in removing this tape from the uh, the body of the machine itself. The tape is actually stuck to the paint patina, which uh, again I would not recommend it unless it's uh, unless you're using more of a painter style tape, then it's a little bit safer to do that. So Jane, Jane did some pretty thoughtful packing all in all. Obviously the, the wrong type of outer container, uh, the tote that she picked again is the wrong kind of plastic and it fractured real badly. But taking extra time to put bubble wrap over the feed dog drop right here shows some real thoughtful packing. So I think that's really cool. Well done, Jane, well done. 
and we still have some of that tape stuck to the uh, patina as well. So yeah, don't use don't use uh, strapping tape on the the body of the machine itself, folks. Use uh, painter's tape, and then use stretch wrap to hold anything in place that you're concerned about. Uh, you know, being immobilized and kept kept in one position. That last song was kind of weird. I don't know if I really was into that. Uh, now this next one, if any of you have uh, pets of any sort, uh, you probably have encountered this at one time or another. It's called fleas. Fleas. Don't start itching. Don't start itching. You're fine. You're fine. Motors really, really quite loose. Kind of see that? Hopefully, it's just a matter of the uh, the mounting bolt loosened up instead of something cracked, which could have happened. More tape. More tape on the paint. And here we're actually getting some of the paint coming off, unfortunately. The only other way to try to do this, uh, and it's not as practical necessarily during a premiere, is if you get a machine like this where somebody has uh, put tape on the body of the machine, you can use a hair dryer. Uh, from a distance of about six to eight inches away for just a short period of time, maybe about 20, 25 seconds. And what it'll do is it'll soften, soften the grip of that glue so that you can more readily pull it off. And uh, it'll be less likely to damage the paint, but it'll probably leave some of the sticky residue behind if you do that. So it's kind of a, kind of a trade-off. When it's uh, cooler like this, it's going to peel it off with very little residue, but it's going to be more inclined to uh, to damage the paint. So it's probably going to be really hard to see, but right here you can kind of see where when we remove this tape, we took some of the uh, patina with it, which you know that's that's something you can obviously avoid by just using another type of easy to type remove uh, tape like a painter's tape. All right. I'm just doing kind of a little examination of this to see if I let, if I think it's going to be safe enough to try to uh, fire this puppy up. I'm going to take this backing off of it. If you if you decide to if you have like an open style foot control like this, and this is typically the way they were mounted into tables. When they were put in the tables, they didn't put a back on it. They just mounted it usually by putting two screws through this right into the wood and then this was facing on the the inside so it wasn't exposed out where you could get shocked off of it and if you ever have a, a foot controller like this and the machine is plugged in do not touch anything inside of here uh, I had one gentleman that sent me a note saying that he had been trying to do something with his machine and just gotten it it was this type of style that was taken out of a table table and he didn't realize you could get shocked off of the back of this well this foot controller is the portal for electricity to flow into the motor. So as soon as you plug that machine in and you plug this foot controller in, this is charged with electricity even if the machine isn't running. I've shown that to you before when I will get my little detector, we'll plug in a foot controller like this and we will get an electrical uh, indication that there's, you know, that this is charged, it's electrified. So just a word of caution, if you happen to have a foot controller like this, and it's plugged in, it's charged, don't touch anything in the back, don't touch these coils, these are charged, obviously. I just had a coil come off, that was weird. <laughs> Let me see if I can do an impromptu fix. See this coil right here? This little gap point? That sucker just came loose. Oh, let's see, can we do an impromptu fix on this? Let's see if we can. Oh, I see the little coil end came off. So it's just kind of dangling there. There we go. We got it back on. So each one of these little fields right here 
is going to have one of these coils. And as this modulator moves across when you're depressing it, like so, it's going to open up that flow of electricity wider and wider and wider. With this being the lowest point, this being the highest point. So that's kind of how it works as it moves across there. And uh, this comes in contact with these little uh, rivets here that are holding these wire assemblies in place. But uh, my suggestion is don't use, uh, as this one has it right now, paper. Don't use paper on the back because with this being an electrical field, it generates heat. Uh, it's possible that it could generate a spark. And if you have a paper back on it, well, you know what I'm saying. Use something like a plastic uh, or something that's less inclined to uh, be a combustible risk. Especially as you have it kind of pointing down and you're not aware of what's necessarily happening underneath there. Because this right now is set up to be a foot controller, not a, a knee controller like in a table sort of thing. So don't use paper on the back. I'm going to throw that away. So the action of this seems to be okay. And the other thing I'll just point out real quick is... Uh, whenever you get a machine and it has this older style, it's called a mercury style foot controller, um, always take time if it has a back to take that back off and, in, and in, inspect uh, this uh, inner piece right here. In most cases, it's, it's going to be made out of a porcelain type material. These have a tendency to crack or develop cracks. And if they develop a crack and you're not aware of it and you're engaging this, it could cause uh, this to pitch up or something like that, touch the, the back of that metal plate, and uh, you could get badly shocked off of it. Unless, you know, a lot of people like sewing barefooted. I know, uh, I think Annette has told me down in Texas, maybe it's a Texas thing. Uh, Annette down in Texas says she loves to sew barefooted. So if you have an older style Mercury foot controller like this, and this uh, housing on the inside that is kind of a, a cast uh, porcelain, uh, if that tends to crack, or if it does crack, uh, and this grounds out on that case, either on the side or on the back, uh, and you're barefooted, you're going to know pretty quick something's not right. So, And also these bare contacts down here, where the wires come in to connect, uh, those aren't horrible, but you'll want to, if you have a foot controller that's wired like this right now, you're going to want to get something closer to this. Give me just a second here. You're going to want to stick those wires into something like this. Now this pack might not be open yet. This pack is open, I think. Yep. You're going to want to get something like this, which are available at your local hardware store. They even sell them at uh, retail establish establishments like uh, Walmart and that. And the wire just slides inside of that opening. Then you use like a pair of vice grips or something like that. Once the wire is safely all the way through that uh, chamber, usually you want to push the wire so it's coming out the other end. And then you'll crimp this down. It'll bite that wire and hang on to it. And then you've got a secure way then that's also insulated. That's what this blue is right here. It's a type of insulation. So that when you attach it to these screws, uh, you're going to have a nice secure connection that's going to be insulated. Right now, I've talked about this before, electricity is like water. It can leak out, and right now we've got a lot of electricity leaking out of these two points. These would eliminate that probably about 90%. And then usually I'll, I'll replace something like that with these, but on top of that then I'll insulate it with an oil and heat resistant type of epoxy. So I seal it even further than what these will do. And that'll make the uh, foot controller more safe. It'll make it more efficient. And, uh, I mean, that's, that's what a foot controller should do. It should be safe and efficient, right? All right, so let me set that right there. And they've got different styles of these. I'll, I'll just show you that real quick. Um, different styles. These particular ones are ones that I use pretty regularly. And you'll see on the front of the packaging, it'll give you the gauge protection of somewhere between 16 down to 14 gauge. The lower the number, the more electricity that's going to be able to handle. That's the way it works uh, with these types of things and with wire as well. 
So when this is rated between a 16 to a 14 gauge type connector, it's going to cover you well beyond what this motor and this electricity demand would be on a machine like this. It's going to cover you probably to about 3 to 5 amps. 3 to 5 amps. And the motor on this particular machine is only going to be about 1.1 amp. So these are safe to about 3 to 4 times uh, the voltage that the machine would demand, which is good. You always want to go higher, right? So uh, this is just an example of one of the ones you'll see in there. You'll have some that are much higher, uh, might be 18 gauge. Again, the higher the number, the less uh, voltage, the less electricity that it can handle. So these are a nice middle ground one that'll handle anything that I'm going to do in this workshop, even light industrial uh, to industrial machines. Because even those, uh, those servo motors are usually only going to be rated up to about 5 amps. Some of them are bigger. Some of them are going to be up to like 7 to 10 amps. And in a case like that, I wouldn't want to use these as connectors. I would go to a 12-gauge or even a 10-gauge type connector so it was safe. Okay? All right, a little bit more music. We just had our brief little electrical lesson. So hopefully all of you are done scratching now after I played that last song, which was called Fleas. And uh, I'm not a... Uh, a bug expert. I'm not an entomologist. I think that's what they're called. Isn't it an entomologist? But I can tell you this, that I know from uh, friends and from experience in life that dogs and cats do not have the same types of fleas. In fact, cat fleas are about 12 to 15 percent bigger than dog fleas and a lot more aggressive. So if you're a cat owner, Keep your cat free of fleas because if they get cat fleas, they can carry off small children. I mean, they're that big and they're that aggressive, seriously. I didn't plan an entomology mini type class as part of this premiere, but oh well, it happened. All right, so this next one is called Meteor. Meteor. <laughs> shining my flashlight on to kind of like make, make it look like a meteor. I don't think it's working, do you? Nah, it's not working. It's just a thought. Just a thought. Again, if you're new to this channel, this is a workshop, but it's also a playroom. Come on now. Say the playroom. Playroom is what it is here at the workshop gonna have some fun gonna have some fun be a little silly in the playroom enter at your own risk hey yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh, eh. I know I can't rap mr. bean I know I can't but I'm trying it's all about trying it's not about always hitting it it's not always about nailing it just trying it trying it we are cow country and we'd lead the way if you're not with us get out of our way hey yeah cow country we lead the way if you're not with us get out of our way Ooh. Ha. all right <laughs> ha, ha. All right, don't even type in the chat if you think I have a career in rap, because I think I have a lot of practice before that's a possibility. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. Uh -uh. Well, you can see in the camera right now, as we are finally close enough to this machine, this is a Fuff 230. Fuff, it leads the way. Fall. It leads the way. Fall. Gonna make your day. Yeah. Come on now. 
Bring it down now. Made in Germany. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. So this Fof 230 is going to be real close to the machine that I'm preparing for Heidi in Switzerland on the other workbench. It's going to have a lot of the same controls, a lot of the same features. The only difference is it's not a free arm, it's a flatbed. You can see that. A lot of the same characteristics on this model 230, which in German is 230. 230 uh, is this model. And if you look at those controls, kind of take a little uh, flash in your mind and, and save that memory. Controls, controls, control on top, controls here, control. We go over to the other workbench and you look at Heidi's, which this is a crazy mess over here right now, but this is organized mess. Look at these features on Heidi's, her 332. Same features, and the lid, I don't know where I have the lid. Oh, the lid is over here. The lid is over here. You can see the same type of features and controls on this Model 332. It's going to be almost a carbon copy of that machine on the other workbench, but it's going to include this free arm. So that was kind of the transition from that model over there that was designed as a flatbed machine and people are saying, no, 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 we want, we want a free arm. We want to be able to do cuffs and all that kind of stuff and hem pants, etc., with a great deal more ease. So Foff said, okay, we're going to make another model, the 300 Zwei und Dreisig, and we're going to make it a free arm model. And that's what I'm going to be sending to Heidi because Heidi's going to be making shoes in the Swiss Alps area in Switzerland. And it'd be a lot easier to make shoes on a machine like this 332 than on a machine like this 230. This 230 is great for a lot of things, but if you really, really need a free arm, it's not the best choice of machines for you. It just isn't. But it's got a, it's almost a carbon copy in many respects of the other one. A little bit of a different drive system on this 230. On the, on the uh, 332 that I showed you on the other workbench for Heidi, it's going to be uh, a vertically mounted type uh, uh, cleated belt that's going to come off of that motor assembly that's on the bottom of the machine. Here, you're going to have a motor mounted on the rear of the machine instead of on the bottom. And you're going to have a drive, drive system that's going from front to back instead of vertically, like on the 332. Uh, both very good drive systems. And when you look at the mechanics inside, this just pulls off. You look at the mechanics inside, you're going to see a lot of the same similarities. The only thing you're going to notice on this one is it has a single cleated belt along with, these are the uh, fine tuners and the readers for the cam system. Again, this, this uh, 230, just like the 332, is going to have a cam stack. That's what this is right here with a ton of stitches engineered into the machine so you never have to add a cam. Cams are already engineered into the machine just like the 332 on the other workbench. But here you've got a single cleated belt and if I'm not mistaken, this 332, and the 332s were made differently. Not all of them are exactly the same. But on this 332, you can see that we have dual cleated belts. And I chose this machine very specifically for Heidi because of the dual cleated belt feature on it. It's going to have a cleated belt that comes over the balance wheel. These two additional cleated belts here that also serve to time the machine. But this is going to have... A positive traction and a burst because of the dual cleated belts on this 332 model that are absolutely perfectly suited for sewing uh, shoes you know through that leather multiple layers all that kind of stuff but a lot of the same design features on it you can look at it here and then look at that 230 on the other workbench and uh, they're basically brothers one has a free arm on the other workbench this one doesn't but for, mo for, for a lot of sewers, this is going to be a great backup heavy-duty type machine where you don't necessarily need a free arm and you just need to be able to stitch at a high level and have a lot of good material movement with it. So, And again, you're familiar with these. Uh, the Germans like to make it simple when it comes to oiling points. Anywhere you see red is going to be an oiling point. I showed you in another premiere, though, you got to be mindful that there can be some hidden oiling points like right underneath this bobbin winding tire, there's another key oiling point that lubricates the main shaft
for the balance wheel. So you have to kind of push this back. And if that's not enough, you take out this uh, single screw right here, the single bolt. Take out that single bolt. This whole assembly comes off, and then you have immediate easy access to that key oiling point that's kind of hidden by this uh, bobbin tire. You can only, all, almost almost see it, sort of. See that little well right there? Underneath the button. Now, there you, there you see it. <gasps> now you don't. There you see it. Now you don't. There you see it. Now you don't. <gasps> so you have to get oil into that little space underneath the bobbin winding tire to lubricate that main shaft. It's probably one of the most essential lubrication points on the machine. And back when the machine left the factory, there was some red on there. Now it's just gone. So a lot of people will miss that oiling point on their FOF. And if they discover it or they watch a, a, a video premiere like this, and all of a sudden they add a couple drops of oil to that, it's crazy. Their machine will go from... It just goes crazy because that's such an essential lubrication point. And because it's hidden by that bobbin winder tire, tons of people, tons of people miss that oiling point right down there. Yeah. That was a free tip. No charge. No charge! <laughs> All right. Another good tip on this model, and the, two, uh, the 332 is going to be uh, similar, is if you need to, um, not if, you really do need to, uh, there's a lot of lubrication and service points inside of the faceplate area. This is not a faceplate that opens. You've got to loosen this bolt right here. Take that bolt out, and then this faceplate will come off. Just be aware when you take it off, you're going to have to realign uh, the threader and everything because it kind of slides into the faceplate. You can kind of see it right there. That's where that little mechanism has to slide into. So it's a little bit tricky. If you put it put it, put it back together wrong, your, uh, your uh, auto needle threader thingy will not work properly. But there's a lot of service points in there, so it's worth risking it taking that off, you know, loosening that bolt right there so you can service and clean all those points that are housed inside of there. Yeah. But again, the 230 is basically, um, it's a twin of the 332. It just doesn't have the, the, the free arm. It's also going to have a slightly different, slightly different hook system. 332 is going to have the hook on the front. This is going to be a side-mounted hook, kind of underneath this area here. I think we can get a peek of it, sort of. Oh, where's my flashlight? It's too busy making a meteor before. Oh, I'm mistaken. This is a... Uh, they did them both ways. They did them with a, a side mount, and some of them were front-mounted, and this one is front-mounted. Yeah. Yeah, I expected to see the raceway facing this way, but it's actually facing the front. Cool. Like I said, sometimes a teacher, always a student. And I've touched hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, FOF machines, but, you know, you touch so many other machines. You're working on Elna's, you're working on Husqvarna's, you're working on Kenmore's, and uh, sometimes the nuances, or the nuances of the nuances of some of these models, uh, you, don't, you don't remember it. I don't remember it. So, all right. I think I am going to try to do a uh, power test on this just to see what we get. I'm getting fairly good movement with uh, the balance wheel. I'm not seeing any bare wires, none that are evident. I am seeing a really ugly sewing shop sticker right here from our friends Factory Outlet Sewing Center in New Jersey. New Jersey! I mean, come on, instead of Vineland or whatever the heck that is, it could at least be Anderson. That'd be South Carolina though. It could be uh, Elizabeth Port, New Jersey. Yeah, it could be Elizabeth Port, New Jersey instead of Vineland, New Jersey. So, yeah, I still, it's one of those great mysteries of life, why people feel compelled they have to stick their sticker in a spot like that. If they've done a good job, the customer's going to remember where they're at, who they are. They will. I never put stickers on my machines. Never. 
So, so let's get back up on the tripod. Before I do that, I'll just kind of peek around the machine real quick. Let's move this to the back. And this is a great reminder as we're looking at this right here, that we are only, as I showed you at the beginning of this premiere, we are only 30 subscribers away from hitting 10,000. As soon as we hit 10,000, you're going to have an opportunity to make a $100 donation to the folks down at the History Museum in South Bend, Indiana. You're going to get a 160-year-old brick, very similar to this, nearly identical, that was part of that original building. It's a historical brick, 160-year-old brick. You'll receive a brick when you make a $100 donation directly to the History Museum. Don't, don't send the money here. You'll use Christy Dunn as a contact. Send the money down to those folks. That will automatically then get you one of these historic bricks. And I've had a number of people contact me saying, when are we going to do the contest? When are we going to do that? I want to get a brick like that and I want to have it in my sewing room because it's just super cool. And so you'll have an opportunity to do that. Again, I've got a limited number of these bricks. So you'll want to jump into it as quickly as you can, make that donation, get a brick, and get entered into a contest where you can either pick door number one and get a Scottish fully restored machine that could be a Singer 222K or door number two for sure will be a fully restored 201-2, the Rolls-Royce of Singer sewing machines. So it's going to be a super cool contest that you will not want to miss. And we're only 30 subscribers away from being able to initiate that. So if you, haven't, if you haven't subscribed yet, if I can speak, if you haven't subscribed yet, click subscribe before you um, even get done watching this premiere. Even before you're done watching this live premiere, click subscribe. And any of your sewing friends, any of your quilting friends, any of your applique friends, any of your whatever friends that do crafts, Send them to the YouTube channel as well, Cow Country Vintage Sewing Machines and Restoration, and get them to subscribe as well. So we can, we can get to that 10,000 mark and initiate this contest for this historic 160-year-old brick. But more importantly, the support that we're going to show to Christy Dunn and all of the folks down in there at the History Museum in South Bend, Indiana. And if you're brand new to this channel, you'll say, okay, what is, you're in Wisconsin, Scott, what is the significance of South Bend, Indiana? What's that about? Well, what that is about is I took a trip down there because those folks down there were gracious enough to host me down there and to set up a whole room full of archived uh, uh, type items, items that were uh, incredible historical significance. Uh, with a variety of different machines. Artifacts, that's the word I was looking for. Blah. They set up a whole room full of artifacts for me to examine and for me to videotape. Uh, Kat and Christy Dunn and others just went out of their way to set up that room for me so I could spend a number of hours there and look at all those really cool items. And they would share what they knew about them and then I could share some of the stuff that I knew about them as well. It was just a great exchange where we shared the role of being a teacher and being a student. How cool is that? And they treated, treated me with such hospitality and such kindness uh, that I just I was just overwhelmed. And then on top of that, then, they took me over to the incredible mansion that's co-located with their History Museum location that also has the National Studebaker uh, Museum as well. And they took me on a private tour I mean, VIP access going through the mansion there, the Oliver Mansion. mansion. The Oliver Mansion, the, it was the Oliver family that had this. You know what? I'm having to share all this stuff with you. Look it up on the YouTube channel. I've got some great videos posted there that show my tour of the Oliver Mansion, also known as Kopsha Home. Kopsha Home is, is a small village in Scotland. That's part of the reason that behind door number one, instead of just any machine at all, it's going to be a Scottish machine because those are the roots of J.D. Oliver. J.D. Oliver was the founder of this great company that did farming, farming equipment and everything. And they became multi-multi-millionaires because of that uh, great invention that they had. And they got involved with other businesses as well on top of that. But the whole point is, it's an incredible tour down there that they provided to me. 
incredibly kind, incredibly generous with their time. You got to check those premieres out. And after you watch them, it, you're going to be like, the light, light bulb is going to go on. And you're going to be like, oh, I get it now. I get it why Scott wants to, you know, in a sense, pay it forward and help these folks out, especially with the knowledge that over 30% of the museums across the U.S. have permanently closed their doors because of the pandemic. No one will come and see them. No one will support them. They ran out of money. They had no choice but to close their doors. So we do not want to have that happen to the History Museum down in South Bend, Indiana. It, not on my watch. It's not going to happen. So I need your help. I need your support as we're only 30 subscribers away from hitting the milestone of 10,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel. You need to start getting yourself pumped up, getting yourself stoked and saying, yeah, I am going to get one of those bricks and have it in my uh, sewing room. I'm going to get one of those bricks and have it in my business as a talking point, as an icebreaker, as people come in and they're saying, what's with the brick? What's, what's the big deal about the brick? And then they can share the story about that incredible Singer Cabinet Factory that was running back in South Bend, Indiana, that came on the scene in the 1860s and closed down in 1955. A 160-year-old brick that only a few select people are going to be privileged to claim one as their own as a result of this uh, milestone contest that we're going to be doing and fundraiser to help the History Museum down in South Bend, Indiana. So if you don't jump quick and you miss out, I'm sorry. Maybe I'll be able to get down there again and be able to talk that uh, keeper of the keys into giving me some more bricks. Maybe I won't. So don't roll the dice on that. Make that $100 donation to the History Museum in South Bend, Indiana. Again, using Christy Dunn as a contact. Send the money to them. They will notify me. I will enter you into that contest so you can have a chance of winning either a Scottish machine, a maybe a 222K, or for sure a Rolls Royce of Singers, the 201-2. And it's the reason I chose to put my Rolls Royce on top of this brick is because out of any machine that the Olivers could have picked to have in their mansion. Again, the Oliver Mansion is co-located with the History Museum down there in South Bend, and I toured it, and it's on this channel. you got to watch it. You're gonna, your jaw is going to drop. Tiffany Glass. I mean, just every appointment, beautiful appointment in this mansion that you could want. Plus, I had the privilege of touring it during Christmas, so it is just decked out. But out of any machine that this million Air family could have picked. They could have picked any machine. When I got to that top floor in the Oliver Mansion, guess what machine was sitting in there that this family had picked out of any machine they could have picked? Type it in the chat if you know what I'm talking about. What machine did they have in that sewing room off of the servants' quarters in that mansion that had like 38 rooms or whatever it was and like 14 plus fireplaces? It was, you got you to gotta look at that video to appreciate what kind of structure this was that the Olivers lived in. Type it in the chat. I'm going to go back to the tripod. you kind of seen this machine a little bit from the back as well. Come on in this shot a little bit. Again, the vintage sewing machine fairies were on duty. Other than the motor being loose, I'm not seeing any evident breakage. Maybe I'll find something afterwards. We already know that one of the pedestal feet underneath here is snapped off because that was in the bag. But all in all, we've got a really, really good FOF 230. Zweihundert Dreisig. So if you typed in the chat, if you typed into the chat that on any machine that the Olivers could have picked, being millionaires, millionaires, money is no object. Money is no object when you're a millionaire and you're looking at sewing machines. Let's just face it, it isn't. They picked the 201 2, the Rolls Royce of Singers. That's what they picked. That's why that Rolls Royce is on top of that historic 160 year old brick. So, <coughs> excuse me, I gotta get a drink of water. So let me uh, let me pick some more music. We're gonna plug this in. 
I've got the fire extinguisher right down below. We're ready just in case. Matter of fact, I'll grab it just so we're doubly sure. And we will try testing this uh, 230 out just to see how it's running at least at the outset. Based on how free the balance wheel is, I'm guessing it's going to fire up just fine. I, I shouldn't use the word fire. Don't use the word fire, Scott. That's bad. It should turn over just fine, I hope. Hopefully. And this is kind of unique. If you're not familiar with these, I'm just going to spin the machine around real quick and show you. Where you plug the foot controller in on this 230 is right on the bottom mount of the motor. You probably see that in the shot already, but I'll zoom in on it. So this basically just has a, a female plug-in point. You're going to take these and slide them right into there, snap them in place. I'll probably tighten that up as well since that's kind of loose right now before we try testing the machine just so that belt doesn't ride wonky on it or anything like that. Matter of fact, let me grab a screwdriver real quick and we will snug that up. <clears throat> And I don't know if it's fitted correctly or not, but I just tightened it up, just a single turn, and uh, we're nice and snug now. So hopefully uh, our test of this machine upon arrival at the workshop will be successful and not involve any sparks or any fire or anything like that. That we don't need. Also, it's going to have a unique plug-in on the 332. The plug-in is going to be more characteristic of this. This is a broken one, obviously. But the plug-in on the 332, where am I aiming right now? Oh, I was aiming down at that plug. All right, let's adjust that. <laughs> All right. Now you can see what I'm talking about. So on the 332, other than this plug being broken, you can see that it's going to have a plug-in like this that's going to be on the rear of the machine. I'm totally upside down. Hold it. There we go. It's going to be on the rear of the machine. You're going to slide it into the back of the machine. On this one, it's going to have a three-point plug-in. So you've got a hot, neutral, and uh, uh, what is it? Hot, neutral, and uh, a ground, basically, is what, what this plug-in set up. So it's going to be wired a little bit differently than uh, the 332 is. And this we will plug in as well. And that's going to be right here on the rear, adjacent to the motor as well, right in that spot right there. I always put it in the wrong way, at least initially. There we go. So again, on this 230 model, both the foot controller and the power source is going to plug into the assembly at the bottom of the motor. Let's go check our hook system real quick. All right, we do have a bobbin in there and a bobbin case, so I'm going to pull those out real quick. Actually, we have a, a bobbin case, but not a bobbin. So, and also because we're going to test it, I've got the uh, presser foot up. We do have material underneath there, but just to give us more freedom to you know run it a little bit. Because again, you never want to run a machine with the presser foot down against the feed dogs because it'll dull the feed dogs and it can mar the bottom of the presser foot attachment. So it's good to transport it with material underneath it, but for our purposes, we're going to have the presser foot up and we're going to plug it in now. So get ready. It's a live premiere. Anything can happen. Thank goodness, no poof, huh? No poof. We'll try the light first. I'm also going to touch it. I've actually gotten shocked off of machines before when I unpack them. So I'm pleased to report that that's not going to happen here, hopefully. Let's just see if this actually has... Oh, this does not have a bulb in it. We had that bulb wrapped up. I thought it was kind of like an extra bulb. But uh, it's not an extra bulb. It's actually the bulb that was in this machine. So we will just 
since we have this right here, we'll just put the uh, incandescent uh, one back in so we can just test that. Unless I drop it and break it, then we'll then we'll be on to another bulb. this back up in there so we can actually test the light. There we go. So our light works. Yay. 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 You can see our uh, Someone did have this uh, face cover off already because you see right now our instead of our uh, auto threader being in the up position like it should be, it's dropping down right now because it hasn't been when they put the cover back on, they didn't reattach it to the assembly on the inside of the cover properly. So it's kind of just hanging down. That's kind of what I was talking about before is if you take the cover off to service and lubricate, just make sure that you get that mechanism for the uh, auto threader back in place properly otherwise it's gonna it's gonna do what this one's doing yeah all right so the next step and it's a little bit more dangerous than turning the light on is we're gonna see if we can push on the foot controller and see what kind of response we get but we'll do that to music that way if anything really dramatic happens like smoke or flames at least we have a music background you know what I mean yeah so what do we have next This next one is called Alien 1963. All right. And what I do, uh, because if there is an issue with the foot controller, I don't think there is with this one. Wow. That is Alien 1963. So what I do, until I know for sure that there's no grounding out issue on it, based on it checking the wiring and that, it should be fine. But I take a little thing like this, my little mallet, and I actually, I don't hit it. I don't hit it. So I just use it to press the foot controller down so that I've got a little bit of protection. Come on on this shot a little bit. And because I don't have a back on the foot controller, I've got it against the uh, table instead of against uh, this carpet. Having an open back uh, foot controller against carpet with static discharge and all kinds of other things is just not a wise move. So, so we're going to operate it like this and we'll see what happens. Don't you love it when I say that? All right, here we go. I'm going to turn this music down and we'll come off the tripod so you can listen to this up close. Um, it's definitely not sounding like it's supposed to be sounding right now. Uh, and it hasn't been serviced yet. It hasn't gone through my process, so that's okay. But um, I'm going to limit how much I run it just uh, because I'm concerned that we might get uh, some damage that results. Plus, you can't smell it in the video. I'm smelling the motor as well. So, so we'll limit this a little bit. We'll limit this just a little bit. All right, here we go. And that's all the way... That's pedal to the metal. That is not, that is not full power for sure. And the clicking you're hearing right now, the clicking you're hearing right now is that auto threader. It's not in a recessed position, so it's getting caught by the needle bar that's causing it to flex up and down. Let me zoom in and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. 
watch right in this area right here you'll see that um, see that closest to the faceplate that part that's going up and down is actually part of that auto threader and it should not be moving at all there see it stopped there it started So I can I can fix that easily enough. Someone put it back together wrong. So so let's just do a little test real quick. Remember I talked about that loop point underneath here that is really hard to get to and most people miss it. Let's listen to this at full power. All right, I'm gonna come out on the shot. Let's listen to it at full power. Pedal all the way down. And then without going through my deep cleaning, just adding adding some lubricant to key oiling points recommended by FOF. Let's see what impact we can have. All right. So again, listen to it at full power. This is full power. It's not horrible. It's not absolutely horrible. Hold on just a second. Okay, that's full power. Now let's just hit some of those key lubrication points, like underneath this um, bobbin winding tire. I'm going to try to sneak it in there because I've got the one hand I'm holding the camera with. Ah, this is awkward. Let's try this. All right, I'm just going to put it in there because I uh, so I just added some there, also to the Pitman arm, right down here, over here to the take up arm area, not take up arm. I'm sorry, the uh, take up mechanism for the cam features. Yeah, that should be enough to at least see if we get a significant difference in boost. So you heard it running before, now let's listen to it again. Here it's speeding up. <laughs> Wait until I take it through my process. That is a noticeable difference. Look at the speed of that take up arm. It was not running anything close to this before. And it's still picking up. So, I posted recently on Facebook about all kinds of misinformation and inaccurate conflicting information. Key lubrication points on a machine like this cannot, you can't overstate how critical they are. All we did is add a little bit of lubrication to this main shaft area, to some of these other key lubrication points that are part of the cam structure. And this uh, Model 230 has already started to come back to life. And I haven't even taken it through my process and deep cleaning yet, but listen already again. Now granted, my concoction is a little bit special, but it's not that special. That's just a matter of a machine that... Uh, Needed a drink. Not like me right now. It needed a drink. And now it's a much happier camper. So I think this uh, FOF uh, 230 500 Dreisig has a huge amount of potential. And uh, again, from apart from not being a free arm machine, 
it's going to have all the same benefits of the machine over on the other workbench that I'm preparing right now to send to Heidi uh, in Switzerland. It's going to have the same features, the same type of output. Again, this one's going to have the motor mounted on the bottom. This one's going to have the motor mounted uh, on the back. And the pulley, uh, pulley system and the alignment of the belt drive is going to be different. The power delivery system is going to be different on this 230. But when I get done with it, it's going to have a lot of kick, a lot of grit. So uh, glad Jane sent it uh, from Texas. And uh, it's kind of an extra machine for her. So uh, she sent it with the idea of getting it serviced and all that. But if I fall in love with it, um, I might buy it from her. You never know. 230 is a, a fabulous machine, just like the uh, Model 260 as well is going to be real close to this. So there you go. Thanks for joining the unboxing. We will end with a little bit of music. And then call it the end. Call it the end. So that last one was called Alien 1963. And this last one is going to be called Outside Visitors. Outside Visitors. It seems to have a real slow start. All right, let's try something else. The Two Seasons. Oh, there we go. Kind of helps if you don't have the volume turned all the way down, you know? All right, so again, this completes the unboxing for... I should put the lid back on, shouldn't I? This completes the unboxing for Jane's Model 230. The flatbed version of the 332 with all the same built-in cam features. This really is a phenomenal machine. And uh, with just a little bit of oil. Well, I've got other stuff in there too. With a little bit of my, as Emma calls it, a little bit of my secret sauce. Another one of my secret sauces. All of a sudden, this machine is sounding like she has a lot of potential. Every time I push that foot controller down, it gets faster and faster and faster. I'm, we may have to anchor this thing down, just in case. All right, well, I hope you all are well. Remember, keep an eye open for that contest that's coming up. We're getting really, really super close, super duper close to that contest for 10,000 subscribers. And when we hit that milestone again, guess what happens? I know I'm driving this home, kind of like a radio commercial. You hear it over and 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 over again. We know, Scott, we know. When we hit 10,000 on the YouTube channel, we're gonna be able to donate 100 bucks to the History Museum at South Bend, Indiana. We're gonna get a historical 160-year-old brick Plus, we're going to get entered into a fabulous contest to win either a Scottish machine that could be a 222K, the free arm version of the featherweight, or for sure, behind door number two, we're going to be able to pick, if we win, we're going to be able to pick a fully restored 201-2, the Rolls-Royce of Singer sewing machines, the same machine that the Oliver family used in their mansion down in South Bend, Indiana. Yeah, you guys are really smart. You, you nailed that. Wow, cool. All right. Class dismissed. Great job, everybody. Take care. Bye.